Hi everyone, in my latest project, I was building a comparison with two new filters that I purchased uh, from Optolong, and it's the L Pro, which I have in this camera right here in the uh, filter drawer, uh, the L Pro for light pollution, and also for a uh, one-shot color camera uh, narrow band, the L Ultimate filter, and also I did use one night the uh, L Enhance. Uh, filter uh, on, on a one uh, other target and I'll be showing those coming up the targets were the Pac-Man Nebula the Rosette Nebula the trio in Leo and the duet galaxies of M81 and M82 now while collecting several nights of data in between those cloudy nights and those days and nights of rain uh, I was watching YouTube astrophotography videos and well, well, like what you're doing right now. And I came across several videos on the same topic. And you probably m might have already seen some of these. The new Blur X Terminator by Russell Croman. To say the least, I was so intrigued by what I saw in those videos, I just had to go and go to his website and buy the product. If you are a bit more skeptical, he does have a free trial version where you can try it out to see if it's something you would like to have in your post-production toolbox. And I suggest, yeah, you might want to get this. To sum it up, I am extremely impressed. So. While showing the filter comparisons, which I plan to do coming up, I will also insert the before and after images using the Blur Exterminator in PixInsight. Wow, it is amazing. The telescope that I used for this experiment was the Orion Eon 130mm triplet refractor sitting on the Skywatcher EQ6R Probe equatorial mount. Now the camera was this one right here, the ZWO ASI uh, one-shot color camera for all the targets. Except one image for the Crab Nebula, I used this one here, the Player One planetary camera, because I wanted to see what it looked like on deep space objects. So we're going to have that in the test. And the filter I used on this one was the uh, Optolong L Enhance. But anyway, uh, that's pretty interesting what this camera can do besides shooting the planets. The exposure times were all at 300 seconds. And most targets were more than two hours of integration time. So let's go to the computer and take a look. This is Editing Pat here. The video that I posted earlier was not focused well and was in low resolution. So I took it down and I re-rendered it into the high resolution. So the images are much, much clearer and you can see the difference in the details. So enjoy. All right, here we are in PixInsight. And the first example I'm gonna show is the Pac-Man Nebula. And this is the uh, stacked image after about, I think this is a five hour image here, maybe four or five hour. But anyway, uh, after a automatic background extraction, and I did a uh, um, color uh, uh, calibration as well. And uh, this is the raw image to begin with. And this is the uh, using the blur exterminator. I mean, look at the difference. It's, it's amazing. And this only took a couple of minutes to process. Uh, to get this image to look like this the old-fashioned way would have taken me about a half hour. Anyway, uh, you know, just using the, basically the, the defaults give me this. So let's uh, go out of this and let's go to the next one. And that was with the L Pro filter. This is with the, um, the uh, ultimate filter. And let's see here. We got the before and after. This is before. See, the the ultimate did cut down those star halos a lot, and and the the bulkiness of the stars or the blurriness of the stars. What do you want to call it? Uh, the bloating of the stars. And this one here with the blur exterminator shows a tremendous decrease in the stars, and you can see a great amount of the nebulosity. Okay, and then that's the Pac-Man there. So you know you can see a, a big difference between the. Um, the, the two with the blur exterminator, the other um, without it right over here. And again, the um, with the L Pro filter, I, I, I like the L Pro filter a little bit better on this one. Uh, the L Ultimate uh, did a good job, but the, the L didn't do bad either. So they're both good filters. All right, let's go into the next target over here. And... Uh, I think I put this down. All right. Okay, doesn't want to go over there. Wants to go over here. All right. 
Let's do that. Let's do this. All right, next, we got the Rosette Nebula. I didn't do the Rosette with the uh, Ultimate. I only used the L Pro to uh, L Pro filter on that. This is the actually the before and after. There's the before right there. Uh, you can see uh, a lot of the stars look a bit bloated. You know, at first it looked pretty good. I mean, I would have to go through uh, Star uh, Exterminator and to get the stars out, deconvolute the stars, get them smaller, and then bring them back in. But with the uh, Blur Exterminator, uh, it, it does a fantastic job uh, just in a very short period of time. And just basically using the defaults and i took the uh, blur exterminator basically the um this is are the defaults here i took the halos down to minus 0.20 and i put the uh sharpening stars I, I brought it all the way up you can play with these values and but this is what it went from this to this using these values here now you can also calculate your own psf which is you know a, a burdensome to my opinion I just let it go into the automatic, let Star Blur, or, uh, Blur Exterminator do its job there, and it did. And there's the difference right there. Okay, uh, let's let's bring out these and these, and let's go to the, uh, let's see, M81. All right, there is M81 uh, and M82 with the L Pro filter. And let's see which one I have here. This is the, um, okay, this is with with the, the the default settings this was the before and this is the after and it, it narrowed them down just a little bit and this was the l pro so let's take a look at the l ultimate and this is the l ultimate right here uh, look at the difference you can see uh with the l pro you don't get much of that red burst coming out of m82 and you don't see much red at all in the um, M81 on the um, some of the spiral bands, but with the Ultimate, which is a more narrow band filter, uh, it's uh, bringing in most of the, um, just three nanometers of the hydrogen alpha over here. And you can see a much more there and you can see the reds over here as well. And I also, let's see, did I do, yeah, I did the, um, the difference here between the exterminator, the blur exterminator and the non-blur. You see the difference there amazing okay with that in mind i took these two and i blended them together using pixel math 50 50 each and came up with this image here that's pretty nice i mean look at that uh you have the uh, you can see some of these uh stars that were giving off some uh hydrogen alpha light over in uh, the spiral bands of m81 and then that starburst in M82 is just uh, shows phenomenal uh, information. Um, this is only a few hours of integration time total, so you know that's not bad at all either. All right, next, let's go into the Crab Nebula. This I took with the uh, Uranus C, the Player One Uranus C planetary camera. I wanted to see what the planetary camera would do on deep space objects, and I took the Crab Nebula here. And this is the uh, let's see. Um, that's the raw image and this is the blur exterminator <laughs> yeah look at the difference uh, the raw image and uh, you know the um uranus c is not a cooled camera either it's just, it's just uh it's just sitting out there and it, basically it's, it's designed for planetary but it does a decent job in um the uh, deep space objects as well what else i have here uh, oh, I passed it through Photoshop here and uh, came up with this image here. Uh, you see the difference between the two um, from Photoshop uh, to the regular, um, just passing it through a uh, PixInsight. Uh, yeah, but yeah, the Crab Nebula, <laughs> look how clean it looks. Um, very nice. This is a, a planetary camera. Not bad. All right, next. Uh, on the list here, if I can get this over here more, let's see, and bring that over here, and then down to here. All right, what do we have now? Oh, we got the trio in Leo, one of my favorite constellations or uh, uh, clusters of galaxies. Here you have uh, the Hamburger Galaxy, or NGC, was it 3628, and uh, then you have MND, uh, M66 and M65, and this is with the L Pro filter right here. And let's see if I have the. Uh, um, this is the raw image let's look at the blur exterminate now see it it did take away some of the nebulosity uh in this galaxy here 
so I have to play with the, the settings a little bit better there. But um, the, the default values didn't do as well. But anyway, um, still not bad. And let's see. Let's take a look at the... Uh, this is the ultimate. See, these galaxies do not give off much... Um, uh, hydrogen alpha at all, as you can see, uh, very dim. Plus, this is only, I think, a one-hour image versus the other one was two hours. Uh, and this is actually, I think, was uh, four hours right here, uh, this image here. And But I did take the two and I put them together and I put a blend in here. And this is the blend uh, showing the, um, the three galaxies in Leo, the trio in Leo, or the triplet in Leo, or the Leo triplet, whatever you want to call it. But there's M uh, NGC 3628, which is a, a unique looking style of a, of a galaxy. These are more classic design galaxies as you recognize them as well. So, all right, um, there you have it, the, um, the blur exterminator um, and the ultimate filter and the L Pro filter from Optolong and one the Crab Nebula with the L Enhance filter. I hope you found some value in this video and again I just cannot say enough good things about the blur exterminator from Russell Croman. It's well worth the value. Now, if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, well, you know, go ahead and consider doing so. Or if you would like, you can help support my channel if you like. Uh, you can hit the join button or buy a super thanks, which directly supports my channel. And if you are planning to buy a telescope for a beginner, I made a video as to what to look for in buying one, which I have posted on my other channel, Pat's Weather and Nature page. This, of course, is Pat's Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. To view it, just click on the screen link that's going to be showing up right here if it's not here already. And... Uh, that will take you directly to the video, or you could click on the link that I have below in the description box. And remember, the heavens are filled with majestic wonders, and many, many are in a sky near you. So unless you need rain, which is getting a bit ridiculous around here lately, clear skies, everyone.